Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I apologize, I cannot speak Spanish. <laughs> so, um, and thanks for the opportunity to present my research. So my talk is about um, um, connections between uh, um, uh, generalized Ricci curvature and, and generalized sectional curvature in, for, for metric spaces. And um, the result I will present um, later is, is a joint work with um, joint uh, with uh, Vitaly Kapovic from Toronto. So <clears throat> So the, the main result is about um, connections between uh, Ricci curvature and sectional curvature for metric spaces. And therefore, um, I, uh, I assume the audience is not familiar with um, neither of these two subjects. So I will, so I will um, in the first uh, part of the, of the talk, I will give a, a, brief a brief introduction in both of these um, uh, fields. So therefore, I will start with um, Alexandrov spaces. So, so what is so in Alexandrov spaces? These are um, metric spaces. Generalized. Sectional curvature. So, um, how can we define them? So, so for that, um, recall. I mean, first we we um, we go back to the smooth setting. So, um, let's consider a Riemannian manifold M. Um, and um, yeah, assume the, it is compact. I mean, in, in general, in this talk, we assume all the spaces are compact for simplicity. And then we have the following um, very nice um, result by um, Topogonov. Toponogov. Topogonov. Yes. <laughs> and it says the following. So. Um, I mean, I, I assume everyone is familiar with the Riemannian definition of sectional curvature. So, and the result of Topogonov, um, Toponogov, <laughs> says the following. So that the sectional curvature of, um, of M um, is bounded from below by is bounded from below by, by some constant k, um, if and only if we have the following um, um, property on the manifold. So, and it is a comparison uh, statement now. So we, um, we pick three points, we have our manifold, and we pick three points. So that is x, y, and z. And um, we draw um, a comparison triangle um, in, in, the, in the model space with constant curvature k in dimension 2. So that is, we pick um, three points. Such that um, the distances between these two points um, correspond to the um, distances between the points that we chose in the manifold. And here we, um, between y and z, we choose a geodesic and we pick some um, t midpoint um, of this geodesic. And uh, similar, we pick, um, we pick the, um, the same t midpoint between um, um, y, -til, uh, y till and z till in the comparison space. And then um, we we look at uh, the distance between x and this um, t midpoint in both triangles, and um, we, we compare them with each other. And um, it follows 
that um, that the distance between x and the t midpoint in, in M is um, um, bigger or equal um, than the corresponding um, distance in the comparison triangle in the comparison space. So here this is the, in the two dimensional manifold with constant curvature k in the, k, uh, in the corresponding model space. And <clears throat> so if we have this property, this is um, equivalent to, um, to having a, a lower sectional curvature bound by k. And um, the, the nice thing about this property, it only involves distances and geodesics. Um, and therefore, it is, um, it, um, the idea of Alexandrov was to, to take this um, property and turn it into a definition um, for, for metric spaces. So, and this is the definition of Alexandrov spaces. And uh, it's the following, a metric space x um, with a distance d is, um, that is geodesic, So I will explain in a minute, in a second, what what is geodesic, um, and also um, compact. We always assume that. Then um, such a metric space has curvature bounded from below. Um, if if this property holds true, so let's call this um, property K. If um, K holds for, for any uh, triple of points um, X, Y, um, and Z, and any comparison triangle. So, and um, to make that even more precise, holds uh, locally. So, I mean, I mean, as one easily can see that, I mean, one maybe gets problem with cut points and such things. So, therefore, we only assume this um, locally in a in, in in small neighborhoods. Holds locally. And. So this is the definition of, um, of curvature bounded from below for a metric space. And similar, we can uh, define um, upper curvature bounds. So by the very same definition, and instead um, of, of, uh, of this inequality, we, we require the reverse inequality here. And then, then we, we um, call this property either this or Therefore, <coughs> we say, um, yeah, has curvature bounded from above if if, yeah, if K holds with the reverse. Uh, So, and um, I mean, these two notions of curvature bounded from above and bounded from below are uh, actually quite different. So the, the properties that you deduce from these two um, properties um, uh, are very different. So, but I mean, um, although the definition in the beginning is very similar. So, <clears throat> and um, okay, let me give you one remark. So, remark here. Um, I mean, um, geodesic means, so X, the metric space is geodesic um, if for all um, X and Y in the space, 
there exists there exists a minimizing um, a minimizing geodesic. That means there exists a curve um, gamma into the space such that um, the curve connects these two points. And um, more important, the length of that curve that we always can compute in a, in a metric space equals exactly the distance between x and y. So this definition, of course, is, is different from the one uh, we know from Riemannian manifolds because there, I mean, geodesics, a curve is a geodesic if it solves a, 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 um, the geodesic ODE on this manifold. And here we, we say geodesic means only it's, uh, it's a minimizing um, shortest path between points. So that is more restrictive than, re than the notion that we have on manifolds. And um, let, me give me, let me give you another reformulation of that. So reformulation. So this is very geometric, but one can, um, one can um, turn this into a slightly more analytic definition in the following way. So, and from now on, we, we always assume um, k equals zero. Because this is just for simplicity, I mean, um, because, yeah, I mean, it helps to, to write the definitions in a short way. So, <clears throat> so in this situation, the, the model space that we consider here um, is, is simply R2. And, um, and then um, this um, inequality star here, so this, let's call this star. Then star becomes the following. So star, same as, um, so first of all, we can take the square. And then, um, I mean, this is um, a distance in the model space, and, and so we can apply um, um, trigonometric formulas and, 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 and some application of the cosine law. Cosine law um, tells us that this here equals um, 1 minus t. And um, recall, I mean, we, this is distances of the, of the comparison triangle, so all of these distances are, uh, again, the distances in the manifold or in the, yeah, in the manifold. Or in the metric space. And so we see um, this function here uh, in, in T actually satisfies kind of a convexity inequality. So, and, um, and we know convexity can be um, translated into uh, inequalities on, on um, second derivatives. So it's, uh, it's, it's a more analytic condition. But I mean, this convexity is, is called one convexity. So we know that then um, this function here, um, these x, y, T square is, um, or it's not one convex, but um, it's, it's, it's here is actually the length of the geodesic again, is um, L lambda convex, uh, concave, sorry.
And um, so we can check um, if a metric space is an Alexandrov space by considering this distance functions here. So on, in the metric space, this here is precisely x um, IP. And it tells, you, tells us that um, if, we, if we look at it on the manifold and compute the, the Hessian that, I mean, this distance function here is one, con, uh, one concave. And similar, um, um, a similar characterization we can, a similar reformulation we obtain for curvature bound from above and where we replace concave by convex. So are there any questions so far? So, <clears throat> so this is the sectional curvature part. Um, and um, so next I want to explain um, uh, what, is, um, what is Ricci curvature for, for metric spaces or um, I have to say for metric measure spaces. So this is the second part of the introduction. And for that I, um, I have to introduce some, um, some um, pieces of optimal transport. So the, the definition of Ricci curvature for a metric space is, or for a metric measure space is based on optimal transport. And Ricci curvature. So, in this uh, in this context, um, we we again start consider we 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 again consider some metric space, like in the definition of Alexandrov of Alexandrov spaces. Compact, and now um, the, um, the theory of optimal transport um, um, studies. Um, so, is a study of the space of probability measures. So, we define P x, that is the space of all probability measures. So where the measurability, of course, comes from the, from the one that is induced by the distance and the topology of the distance. And then, <clears throat> and then we pick two measures, mu0, mu1, in, uh, from this um, space of probability measures. And um, we define um, the following um, um, uh, value. So, uh, no, let, we pick two probability measures and we define um, um, a so-called plan. A plan, plan pi, between um, mu zero and mu one is, is a probability measure. Um, on the product space, such that um, such that the marginals of this measure um, um, become mu zero and mu one again. So this is what we call a plan. Um, so and it. It's a way uh, how we can connect um, um, two probability measures uh, on, on our space X. And then we can define for such a plan a so-called cost function. So um, we can define or we can define the, the cost of such a plan in the following way. So we can, um, so what do we do? I mean, we have the information of the metric space and we have such a plan, so we have the distance that is a function on the product space, so let's integrate it with respect to this plan. 
And this is what we call the cost of the plan. And um, so you see the, the distance square plays the role of a cost function. So it tells us how expensive it is to transport things from, uh, from a point X to a point Y in our space. And then, and with this notation, um, um, people had the following idea. So um, we can take, so, so the optimal transport problem now is find um, a minimizer um, of this cost here um, in, in pi. So we, we want to find, um, 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 so we consider the following minimization problem. So we consider the, um, the, um, the family of all plants between mu0 and mu1. And we um, take the infimum with respect to this um, plants. And this infimum, I mean, you see it's bounded from below, so it, it, there will be an infimum. Probably it will be zero, but I mean, um, in general, it's non-zero, actually. And, um, more general, I mean, optimal transport theory tells us that it's actually a, a minimizer. So, I mean, this here is indeed actually the minimum. And um, so, and if you look at it, this is, um, um, this is first of all, it's, it's, it's this optimal, it's this transport problem, but it's also a distance on the, on the space of probability measures. So, or, or better to say, if we take the square root of that, it becomes a distance. So that is um, definite. We, uh, w is called, this is called the so called, um, is the L2 Wasserstein distance. And, um, and the combination of the probability measures and, uh, and this Wasserstein distance is, this, is the L2 Wasserstein space. So, and um, um, people observe now that this um, Wasserstein space is very um, closely related to the geometry of the underlying space. So far, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a purely measure theoretic um, issue, so actually. But, I mean, since the distance is involved, I mean, um, it, it's, it is related to the geometry of the, of the space. So let me give you two remarks on that. Um, so first remark is that, um, that this Wasserstein distance actually metrizes um, the topology, the weak topology of, of probability measures. And um, second remark is that um, that um, this uh, distance is a is a geodesic distance. Um, if and only if um, the underlying metric space is a, is a geodesic metric space. So it indeed is related to the geometry on the, uh, on the underlying space. So far this doesn't tell us much about um, curvature and, uh, and such things, but we can see that, I mean, this um, Wasserstein space sees what's going on in the, uh, in the underlying space. And um, one can push this idea uh, a little bit further, or much further. I think I will continue to write there. So, 
Um, I mean, what we want to do is characterize um, um, Ricci curvature. And for that, I mean, the volume, Ricci curvature is related to the volume. And uh, on our um, um, metric space here, we, we have uh, a priori no natural volume. I mean, one can might maybe choose the Hausdorff um, measure, but this is um, it's, uh, a priori related to some dimension. Therefore, I mean, we, we pick, <coughs> we pick um, some reference measure. M on, on X. And um, if we do so, we have, um, we have now the following possibility. We can, um, we can study entropy functionals that, um, that are defined as follows. And one, uh, uh, let, let me give you one entropy functional. There are more than one. But um, one very uh, useful entropy function is the so-called Rini entropy. And it is, um, it is defined as follows. So um, um, this n here is a parameter bigger than zero. And it's defined as, um, as a function that goes from the space of probability measures into um, the negative uh, real numbers. And it is defined as as the following integral. Um, if, <clears throat> if, and now here comes the reference measure into play, if we know that mu has a density with respect to that re reference measure, and um, zero uh, otherwise. So, <clears throat> and um, looking at this function, um, the, the idea of, um, so now we come to the, the, to the main definition, the idea of Lot Sturm in Villani was the following, Lot Sturm Villani. They say um, we, um, a metric measure space X, so, a metric measure space that is now, like I said, a, a metric space together with a measure that we, um, that we picked in the beginning, this one here, um, satisfies satisfies um, a curvature dimension condition, satisfies the curvature dimension condition um, CD um, 0N so it's a condition that um, captures curvature and dimension, and the dimension is, is, um, is this parameter n. Um, if the following holds, if for all mu zero, mu one, um, in our uh, in our Wasserstein space, there exists mu t. That is a, an L2 Wasserstein geodesic. So that is a, a, yeah, a W L2 Wasserstein distance geodesic. Such that <coughs> um, the entropy, the Rini entropy, um, is convex along this geodesic.
So this was um, the the idea of, of these three guys, um, and I have to say they. Um, um, so first, um, one remark. Um, I mean, this is for um, zero curvature, but of course there's a. Again, um, I only will uh, will give you the definition for uh, for non-negative curvature, um, because the the definition for general K is a little bit more. Um, um, complicated to write down on the blackboard, actually. So, so therefore, let me give you the remark. Similar one and define um, <coughs> CD um, KN or for all K. Okay, and second thing is, um, I mean, this definition, I mean, it's, so far it's just a definition. So, but it's motivated by the following theorem. Theorem, if we go back to, to the smooth setting, so if we, um, um, if, if we have a Riemannian manifold, Mg, Then um, the Ricci curvature of this um, Riemannian manifold is bounded from below by k, and the dimension is bounded from above by um, by n. Um, if and only if um, the corresponding metric space. So I mean, we can we have this Riemannian manifold, and it, it induces um, um, a distance function and also um, a reference measure, that is the Riemannian volume. If this metric measure space um, satisfies um, the CD KN condition. So, <clears throat> and here you can see um, how the dimension comes into play. So n is, is an upper bound for the dimension of m. So it's not, um, people call this usually the analytic dimension, and it, it may differ from the geometric dimension. That's important to notice. So I mean, um, I mean, remark is um, here, remark. But I mean, in a, this is in a, in a Riemannian manifold, but in any case, we have if, um, if some metric measure space, that is why it's um, CD KN. And we know that um, the geometric dimension, that is, um, we say this is the Hausdorff dimension, um, is bounded from above by this N. But still, uh, um, these two things may be different. But I mean, we see that the imposing this condition CD on, on the metric space forces the space to be finite dimensional. And this is important for Ricci curvature, as you may know, because in, in, in most of the results involving Ricci curvature on the manifold, the, the, the dimension of the space shows up. So I mean, if we, if we are not able to capture the dimension or the dimension bound, um, then we, we have no hope to show any, um, any good results for metric measure spaces as we can do for, for remaining manifolds. So, <clears throat> yeah. how much time do we have? Okay, okay. so. Um, yeah, let me give you some examples here to illustrate. Um, I mean, this is a very nice definition, actually, because it's, it's very simple. So, and um, it also has a very um, nice geometric interpretation. I mean, um, similar as, I mean, Alexandrov spaces define curvature by triangle comparison. And, um, 
And um, the curvature dimension condition essentially does the following. So, I mean, this is a purely heuristic picture now. So, but imagine um, this is your space here, and we have here a measure, and we have a measure here. And then, I mean, there is this, um, the definition says we find um, some geodesic in between these two measures. And um, to say that the uh, Rini entropy is convex actually means that, I mean, the, um, the midpoint measures here spread out. So, so you can think about it, um, um, or you can think about the sphere, for instance, and if you transport uh, measures on the sphere, um, um, think about the measures as cups that um, sit on the sphere. If you transport them, I mean, um, they will spread out in this way. And um, so therefore, I mean, the, the, the curvature is captured by how um, these measures are transported in, in this space. So, I mean, this is, but this, like I said, it's purely heuristic. So, I mean, um, I mean and, but since we have no not so much time, I will skip um, to go into details what this picture actually means. So. And <clears throat> so, but let me give some, some more examples here. So, so examples. I mean, these uh, spaces um, not only um, 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 characterize Ricci curvature for Riemannian manifolds, but also uh, maybe you heard about smooth uh, weighted metric measure spaces. Um, um, and these spaces have also Ricci curvature in the sense of Bakri and Emery, they, they, um, where you can define a Bakri Emery Ricci um, tensor. And uh, the model example for that is, is the following. So we, um, we can consider weighted spaces. Um, of the form yeah we we have an, um, some interval so this is the metric measures uh, the metric space that we consider and then we as as a reference measure we consider the the Lebesgue measure with a weight that is the sine function to the power of n minus 1 And these, uh, these guys have um, satisfy um, CD satisfies CD um, KN. Oh no, not K, sorry. CD N minus 1 um, N. So they have a curvature similar like, uh, like the sphere as a model space. And actually these spaces uh, something like model spaces in this Ricci curvature framework. <clears throat> so, second example is, I mean, this um, definition has the very um, um, good property that it's stable under gromov hausdorff convergence, or more precisely measured gromov hausdorff convergence. So, therefore, any Ricci limit space that arises in this way is, is, a, is a CD space. So, that is the the series named after Chiga and Kolding. Chiga, Kolding, Ricci limit spaces are CD. And, oh, Ricci limit spaces. Okay, and finally, let me give you a, a kind of a bad example. Let's, um, let's consider Rn and um, take any norm you, you like on Rn. Let um, this here be any norm. Any norm on Rn. Then, um, then we observe the following, that um, Rn, um, together with that norm, that is a metric space, and um, the n-dimensional back measure is, is CD0n. So 
this example is kind of a, a bad example because um, 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 it tells us that any Banach space together with a measure is actually, um, or any finite dimensional Banach space is, is CD. And um, maybe uh, I guess most of you know one, one famous theory, uh, theorem for Ricci spaces is the splitting theorem. And um, it tells us if we find a line in a non-negatively curved Ricci space, it splits off a line. But for Banach spaces, this is certainly not true in general. So therefore, the splitting theorem for this um, guys, so the splitting theorem will not hold in general for the CD spaces. And um, this is kind of um, a bad situation because the splitting theorem is the is the beginning of the regularity theory that um, that you that is used for studying Ricci limit spaces, and therefore um, it's hopeless to establish a, a similar regularity theory for CD spaces. And to overcome this difficulty, um, 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 we, we have to refine this de definition slightly. So, I mean, this will be um, the following. So, we have to um, make the definition a little bit more restrictive, and this leads us to the so-called Riemannian, Riemannian um, curvature dimension condition. So, and, and for that, I mean, I, only, I will make it very brief. So, I mean, we, we again consider a metric measure space. And we, we define, define the so-called Chiga energy. Chiga energy. And that is a kind of, a, or that, that is precisely a, a Dirichlet energy for a metric measure space. So it is um, a functional that maps um, L2 functions with respect to the, to the reference measure that we chose to an to a energy that is called Chiga energy. And it is defined as, um, as, the, um, as the form closure of, of um, of the L2 integral of, of, of Lipschitz functions. So let me um, write down the formula. So it's defined as this limb inf, where we here choose any uh, Lipschitz function, f, any sequence of Lipschitz functions, fn, that converges to f in L2. So I will also not explain this, but this idea in, uh, essentially um, mimics the idea of Sobolev spaces uh, on our end. Yeah? I mean, the Sobolev spaces is the um, closure of smooth functions under the Sobolev norm. And, and, and this idea um, mimics this um, situation in the way that we re replace um, smooth functions by Lipschitz functions. And this here is the so-called um, uh, local slope of the of the Lipschitz function. So this is and. Um, if we do that, I mean, we have to pull uh, then we have to, it is a way to study Sobolev spaces. So we, we, we define then um, the Sobolev space on X as, um, yeah, as all L2 functions such that this Chiga energy is finite. And this precisely um, uh, fits the definition in, um, in Rn, for instance. And then we also have a Sobolev norm um, on this space. So that is the L2 norm of F 
plus the giga energy. And then if we have this here, um, we can ask, um, um, is this um, actually a, a, a Hilbert space or what is it? So because uh, in this example here, if we have such a Banach space and we do this construction um, for this Banach space, this Sobolev space will not be Hilbert. And actually this is precisely what distinguishes Riemannian manifolds from Finsler manifolds and Banner spaces. So therefore we can um, we make the following definition, so uh, a metric measure space. So And this is due to Gili. Gili. Um, satisfies the Riemannian curvature dimension condition, so we, we call it RCD, RCD, KN. Um, if it uh, satisfies um, CDKN um, and and um, this um, guy here is a Hilbert space. Oh, here I should make squares, of course. So S S Hilbert. Okay. So uh, I have to apologize. I spend a lot of time introducing these things, but <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's necessary. So because um, now I'm able to state the main result. So I mean. Let's go back to the beginning. We had um, sectional curvature, and um, so the question is, um, what is the relation between these two things? Sectional curvature and generalized Ricci curvature bounds. So, so what can we say? What, what can we say about, about the connection between um, RCD or CD and, um, and curvature bounded from um, below uh, or above. In it's, uh, it's a very natural question, of course. And <clears throat> I mean, let's go, let's again go back to, to a manifold. Let, let M, G be a manifold. And then, I mean, of course, I mean, the first thing everyone knows that, I mean, a lower sectional curvature bound for M. implies the lower Ricci curvature bound. Okay, and let's not just um, consider a manifold, but also a metric measure space. So. And for simplicity, this time let's choose as reference measure the Hausdorff measure. So, I mean, this first implication, one expects the same thing is true in the general setting, and this is indeed the case. This is um, proven by Petrunin um, in the very beginning of the theory. So, Petrunin proved that um, if you have curvature bounded from below, I mean, this implies um, CD um, and actually also RCD. Because, I mean, one of the interesting features of Alexandrov spaces is that they automatically are, um, um, have this property. So Alexandrov spaces, um, um, without further assumption, satisfy um, that the uh, uh, Sobolev space is Hilbert. So, and what I want to address in... Um, my talk, uh, or the main theorem is now, um, 
what is about if we have a Ricci bound and a, so imagine the manifold has a lower Ricci curvature bound. So let's call this uh, K2. And additionally, some um, upper sectional curvature bound. So intuitively, what, I mean, remember the Ricci is simply the trace of the sectional. So I mean, it should imply that actually, or it implies that you have a lower sectional curvature bound. And more precisely, um, it follows that, I mean, this is a, a just by rearranging the, the terms, we see that the sectional curvature is bounded from below by um, K2 minus um, N minus 2 times K1. And you see if, um, if Ricci is um, N minus 1 times um, K1, um, we get a space of constant curvature. Um, or we get a space that has curvature bounded from below by K1, if, so therefore especially of constant curvature. So, and this is um, precisely, and now we expect the same thing is true for, for, a, for a metric measure space. And this is the, the theorem, um, um, this is the main theorem. And um, it says the following, so, I mean, we, we take a metric space and um, it satisfies um, curvature bounded from above, above by, um, by K1. And, and the metric space XDM with the n-dimensional Hausdorff measure satisfies um, D K two N. Then the following holds. Then um, first, I mean first the the the, the first um, observation is that um, <coughs> that n minus one times um, K one is um, of course bigger than K two. Um, then the second implication is that um, um, X is as curvature bounded from below by precisely um, what we expect uh, by precisely this number here. And um, yeah, and the third thing is then if if we have equality here, so if um, K1 equals then um, <coughs> X is a, a convex subset um, of a constant curvature space form. So, so in particular smooth. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So and uh, let me uh, give you a um, few remarks here. So first, I mean, you see we only require CD. Um, so, and this is um, actually um, um, something, um, uh, some important point also in the proof. So 
let me sketch um, the first three steps of the proof of that theorem. Or I, I will, it's, it's less than a sketch, so it's really just um, um, the idea. I mean, um, yeah, before I do that, um, one more remark. I mean, here we have as a reference measure the Hausdorff measure. And let me point out that this is um, um, necessary for, for, for the theorem to hold true because um, you have this weighted spaces here. And this space here already contradicts the theorem, as you might see. It is, uh, it is an, a space that has positive Ricci curvature, but um, the underlying metric space is, of course, flat. So, I mean, therefore, already the first statement is not true. So, I mean, this is zero, this is positive. So, so it's, um, from this example, it's, it's clear that we have to impose some measure um, that is in, uh, connected to this um, curvature dimension condition in the right way. Otherwise, um, um, it's impossible to prove something. And, um, <clears throat> okay, so, and the proof of the theorem Yeah. Is the following. So, um, so the first step here is um, first step is that I mean that the condition C D plus um, the condition having courage abounded from below. Um, this implies a splitting theorem. or let's call it splitting principle, splitting principle. Because, I mean, <clears throat> I mean each of these two conditions by themselves um, say nothing about splitting. Yeah? The CD condition, as I explained, uh, has no splitting um, theorem and also spaces with curvature bounded from above um, do not split. So the example is, for instance, a tree. Um, trees are curved, uh, spaces with curvature bounded from above, and especially, um, yeah. And but you see, it doesn't split at all. So um, also, you find lines here, a lot of lines. So these two things, uh, separate, do not imply anything. But the the two things together give us, in, in fact, a splitting theorem. And, um, <clears throat> and having a splitting theorem, now we can um, see that um, tangent cones um, are, are n almost everywhere. So this is the next step. So splitting theorem, splitting implies, um, let's call it Rn, tangent cones. Um, almost everywhere, so H N almost everywhere, and um, and now we can and this is um, very nice. So and our N tension cone means now that we really have Euclidean norms here. So these are Euclidean R Ns. It's no, uh, there are no Banner spaces, and then we can um, use a, a theorem by Chiga. Eager proof the Rademacher theorem. I will not explain what it is, but Eager Rademacher theorem. And this, um, in fact, then implies that um, X D H N is, um, yeah, or no, yeah. Yeah, that the Sobolev space of this, um, uh, of this guy is Hilbert. So that the Sobolev space here of X is Hilbert. So therefore, we have we have R C we are actually in the setting of RCD spaces. So so X is or oh, X H N is RCD, 
And now this is now we are uh, in a very good situation because now we can uh, um, use um, uh, a very rich theory that is developed by by people um, um, that studied RCD spaces. So in particular, um, Nicola Chili um, um, developed um, a, a kind of non-smooth differential geometry for metric measure spaces. Um, and this then implies the theorem, um, more or less. So, I mean, and in this implication, there are, there are still a lot of things to do, but I mean, since I'm running out of time, I will skip that now. I mean, the only thing I want to say, it is using, um, it is using um, what we have now is Laplace comparison um, statements, and we also have Hessian, uh, Hessian Hessian operators in this class of RCD spaces and, and the Bochner inequality and all these tools allow us to um, prove um, that, um, that we actually um, are in the class of um, curvature bounded from below spaces. Okay, so, and therefore I, I stop here. Thank you. ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? Um, yeah, this is, um, the idea here is the following, so, oops. I mean, what Chiga proved is, I mean, he has a, a result that says the following, so uh, you have a metric measure space that satisfies a doubling condition in Poincaré, and, and, then, um, and then he says, he has a notion of um, asymptotically differentiability that essentially says, I mean, you, you, you can consider functions and, and they blow up um, uh, uh, on, on the tangent spaces. And he says, a uh, function is asymptotically differentiable if this blow up function is generalized harmonic in his sense. Um, <laughs> I mean, we can, I can explain in more detail, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then, um, and then in, in this paper is also contained, if, um, if, this diff, um, if, we, if the tension cone is Rn and, as, uh, and generalized harmonic, um, then it's actually linear. And this linearity um, allows to, um, um, I mean, to, to see that um, the Sobolev space is infinite is, uh, is Hilbert, we only need to check um, that the Chiga energy is, satisfies a parallelogram rule. Um, that, um, you, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and if you know that um, 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 the, um, the blow ups on the tangent cones are, are actually linear, um, then it's straightforward to see that this um, rule is satisfied. Point-wise on each tangent, uh, almost everywhere point-wise on each tangent space, and therefore almost everywhere um, for, uh, and therefore for the Chiga energy, so. So I mean, it, it's heavily um, based on this Chiga Rademacher theorem, of course. Otra pregunta? Eh. I want, I want to ask about the splitting principle. Is that almost a splitting theorem? What is it about? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a, um, um, yeah, I mean, splitting, uh, splitting principle means, so if you have a space that is ZD0N, and has um, curvature bounded from above by zero, and you find a line, then it splits. So actually, um, the theorem, the final theorem, then tells us that it's already a flat space. But I mean, at this point, we don't, we do not know that. And um, and and this also implies then an almost splitting principle. I mean, because I mean, the nice feature of curvature bounded from above in Alexandrov's sense that it's also stable under gromov hausdorff convergence. So therefore, we we have this splitting principle also in an almost um, um, in, in an almost sense, in an almost rigid sense.
so this is what it means. So, and I mean, uh, yeah. The thing is, only these two things together make it work. So I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. So the the inequalities precisely um, cancel each other away. Um. I can explain it in more carefully if you like later. Este, agradezcamos al, al expositor nuevamente. La siguiente.